Uh, for a special steaming this May bank holiday, I thought I'd take the opportunity to run simultaneously these three Mamod SE3s. Um, I've sort of obviously run them individually lots of times, but uh, I thought it would be a, a bit of uh, fun to run all three together. But before I actually do that, um, I thought as a, an addition to our uh, reference area for stationary steam engines that we have on the, the Free Steam Forum, that I would sort of back this up with a video as well, and uh, to go through some of the, the subtle features that uh, uh, you can find on SC3s, and, and things to look out for uh, should you be uh, sort of in the market for one. Now the three engines that I've got here are essentially my only SC3s, and I used to have about seven or eight of these at one time, various sort of... Uh, years and, and, and so on but I think that was a little bit excessive so starting from this end we have a 1969 1970 uh, SE3 but this is the Griffin and George variation uh, subsequently it has a silver soldered boiler uh, it doesn't have any um, regulator or any it's got an old union nut and also it carries the, the special Griffin and George um, foil badge. Griffin and George were educational suppliers. They're still around today, I think they're just called Griffin Educational Supplies now. Uh, and these particular engines were made for schools. I think they were made in batches uh, up to a total of about 2,000. It's the only sort of variation, sort of major variation on the SC3 that you'll find. Um, say early ones had brass turned whistles, mine's got a push down whistle because I took the brass one off this one and put it on a, an SE2 refurbishment I was handling. Uh, contrary to nonsense that you hear pedal elsewhere, uh, only 2,000 of these were actually made, in other words 2,000 proper Griffin and George engines. We I know in subsequent years they've badged them with different labels on them, you can find them with uh, regulators on them, but they're not silver soldered. Subsequently also, uh, sort of a whole myth has grown up that uh, the SP5 and the SP4 uh, Griffin badge versions are silver soldered, that's preposterous. Uh, only these were uh, silver soldered, they were especially made for schools. I seem to remember the one that was at my school was basically soot black it led a very very hard life and I think most of them did they, they had the living hell steamed out of them met solid fuel anything I think that was burnt that produced heat uh, and steam um, sort of what was used for these so they say they, they haven't tended to survive I mean this was a lucky survivor and it's in extremely good condition actually so I assume they didn't really use it a lot in these science lessons other things you can see on it a uh, typical two arm flat overflow plug um, the decal is not on the side, it's the compressed scallop type uh, which is on the front of the, uh, of the firebox. This one also has the, the, the hammered effect paint which was prevalent around the uh, late 60s, early 70s and according to Steve Malins he said to me at Steam Toys in Action this year that uh, his father Eric Malins probably purchased a job lot of it possibly because it was cheaper or perhaps they were just testing it out but it's always a thing to look out for, it's a, it's a giveaway of any sort of engine, any station or anyway of that period. Next to it we have my earliest SE3, now this one dates from 57, it is a very early one, so uh, what you'll find on this one is the typical 50 sort of stuff, brass whistle, uh, one armed uh, overflow plug, but also you'll find a, a, a screwed down engine frame and more importantly you get the uh, sort of barrel one piece pistons or cylinders rather. The decal for this one is actually on the side or they do tend to sort of burn off. Uh, this one also has the early sort of steel lamp uh, which was a lot larger. You can see this one's not in the best of condition. They do tend to just corrode away because the mess literally you know burns into this stuff. Uh, you can see the difference between it and uh, the, the, the other lamps, the standard ones, a lot, it's a lot longer, it's about an inch longer. You'll also notice on this one it has a red wooden handle. The very first ones had these red wooden handles on them. Uh, later, from about 61, 62, uh, they had white handles, um, which sort of coincided with the introduction of the SR1 uh, roller, which also used a very large version of it on the 
on the blue on the oh sorry on the uh, the actual steering arms they were also in red and blue as well but uh, these were the very first ones they tended then to go white uh, they also had for a while the little slim black type ones and then they eventually settled down to the plastic type arm of plastic type handles uh, so we say that one is uh, dates from about 1957 certainly an early one and uh, uh, say it uh, steams very well uh, that they all do finally we have another engine from around about the late 60s possibly early 70s again this is a sort of standard SE3 it's got the hammered green paint on the engine frame it has this curious push down whistle um, my own experience with it is that they don't work that particularly well I mean it's a great idea you push down and it pops back up again you don't get burnt fingers but they don't seem to reseal this one doesn't seem to reseat properly you have to almost have to pull it back up again I think uh, Mike suggested on the forum that they were possibly introduced as a um, possible solution because the uh, brass type ones which you see here if you try and get your fingers on that underneath say the canopy of a, a TE1A your chances are you will get burnt uh, and these were a little bit sort of uh, easier just to push down it's got a slightly wider body than the, the normal spring reset whistle which came afterwards and you know it's a, it's a clever little idea but in my uh, experience uh, it doesn't work very well at all so say this particular engine you can see it's got a riveted engine frame uh, curiously it's got a smaller size um, pulley on that side uh, and it's just got on this side a plain side whereas we come to the 57 one we see we've got a grooved piston, uh, flywheel there as well as a larger pulley and then on the uh, the SE3, the Griffin and George version, the much larger pulley again. These little features tended to vary uh, throughout the lives of the engines. The overall, the, the, the SE3 uh, sort of changed very little. It's only sort of like 76, you had a hard uh, solid fuel burner. And then the very last ones from about 78, you had a sight glass on the back. You don't see a great deal of those around. So that it's, you know, it's, it's, if you're into collecting variations, it's, it's maybe one to look out for. That said, like all SE3s, they're extremely good runners, fast, uh, they make lots of noise, and um, it's, it's remained, I think, the most popular mammal, or um, well, certainly stationary engine, that, that they've made. And, uh, you know, anyone who hasn't got one and uh, collects mammal steam engines, I uh, would say that uh, your, your collection wouldn't be complete without one of these. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually see it under the kitchen lights, but the, the red, uh, on the the later engine is much is a darker red than the um, mid fit than the 50s one, which essentially has this very sort of orangey warm red paint, which seemed to be quite prevalent then. Though again, as, as I think Steve Manners was explaining to me, that the, the, the shade of red changed in, uh, by all amounts all over the years. You'll see also this one has the uh, integral conrod um, type um, sort of eyelet ends whereas the, the other two have the standard sort of brass um, insert that fits on the end. Um, also this particular one has this strange variation where we have screw-on um, cranks. So there's like a lock nut on there and then the actual uh, cranks uh, themselves screw onto a threaded um, crankshaft. I don't know why that came about but uh, it's an interesting little variation to look out for and it's curious, it's good that this came with that type of uh, crank but also was fitted with the, uh, the strange push down with wind uh, whistle. You'll also see on these that all of them, the boiler ends are plain. Uh, it's just a simple tube boiler with two end caps on it. They're plain caps. Um, once you got into the 70s, these had a, a more of a sort of a pressed, sort of uh, raised sort of uh, lip or sort of design to them, um, which is a little thing to look out for. Um, Really, apart from that, that's about it, really. I mean, you don't really need to say too much more about SE3s. I mean, if you know your mammal engines, then you know about SE3s. Like I say, if you, uh, if you want to know more about uh, what to look for in an SE3 engines, what the variations are, look at my uh, stationary uh, steam toy reference thread. Um, it's only open to members, because uh, I do get individuals, or used to have individuals, that seem to paraphrase what I say, seem to copy everything I say, and 